Welcome back, everybody. On the last episode, we did the airdrome logging contract. On this episode, we're going to get started with the contract run of White Valley. There are six contracts that we can do while we're here, so I've activated all of them. We'll get started with the oil barrels delivery. This goes to the airdrome, and we already have the GMC here. So let's get loaded up. It'll try to load you up with fuel. You have to make sure you load oil barrels. So we'll get five of those loaded right away. And let's get out of here and head to the airdrome. I'll get turned around here and then I'll open up the map and show you the way we're going. So from here, we'll leave, we'll take a left, we'll get out on this road, we'll take another left through the muddy section there, and we'll cross the bridge and head down the highway all the way back, turn off right before we get to the garage, come in this back way, and to the airdrome. That's our path, let's get going. Shouldn't have any issues at all with the GMC going through here, this is pretty much all highway. There's one muddy section just down the road. Take a left here. Out of these six contracts, we have a few trucks on the map. We should be able to do like we did on the other two uh, previous maps. Well, all three of them, I guess, where we basically just haul stuff from different contracts around to different places, trying to be efficient with our cargo space on our trailers. This is kind of thick through here, but it's not going to be any issue. Just put it in low and crawl through here. You get plenty of weight on the trailer to push you down. We also need to bring the Royal back from Pedro Bay. We can take advantage of the raised suspension and use that with the 51 inch tires. Probably would be a good idea to bring the A&K back from there also. We got a few trucks that are still on the previous maps that we need to round up and bring over here. Now we're on the highway, we can just kick her down and cruise. 55 mile per hour speed limit. Let's see if we can hit it. Probably not. This road is pretty smooth. Just this one corner here you have to be careful on. We can take our left turn. There it is. We still have the Gary Longhorn sitting over there. Probably get that out and then put a high saddle on it so we can start hauling heavy trailers here soon. This part here is pretty thick. There are some, some things to winch to, like that stump over there. So that's not a huge issue. As long as you have a good winch with a lot of length on it. The advanced special is what we have on this. Reaches pretty far. And we'll just hang a hard left. Back onto the highway. Should be clear from here. I've definitely made the mistake of bringing fuel here instead of oil. Quite a few times I've made that mistake. It happens to everybody, eventually. Check out our contracts list. We can get started with the Valley Pipeline Building contract. We should be able to get an oversized cargo here. Make sure it's not drilling equipment. They look the same. So oversized cargo, we'll load that up. And then from here, we'll head over to the service site and pick up a service spare part. We can get repaired while we're there. You can just pull out of the airdrome here. Just cut across the fence. Didn't quite make that turn. We'll go right through the fence here and onto the highway. That should save us some time. There we go. Pull right out here. I can cruise the highway up to the service site. Four slots are taken up by this oversized cargo. One slot left, we'll pick up a service spare part there. We can take a left here right before we get to the garage and get out onto this other road. Easy enough. And then just up the road here to the right is the service site. Let's pull in here now. We'll get repaired, grab that service spare part. We only need one. And we can get turned around, being careful not to hit the building, of course. Let's map this out real quick. From here, we'll just turn right on the highway. We'll head up the road across the long bridge. We'll turn right again, follow the road across the mud and then take a left on that other highway and we'll take that highway up past the factory across the bridge and to the pipeline facility let's get going pulling out of the service site just got to be careful you don't hit the guardrail this is the road i was talking about before that you got to be careful you don't get going too fast especially right through here where it starts to go downhill you can pick up speed real quickly and we'll cross the bridge here the long bridge and now we're coming out the other side Instead of following the highway to the left, we'll just continue straight into that muddy section again. We just went through here with the oil barrels, probably tore it up a little bit. We'll just have to make sure that we try not to take the exact same path we took last time. The GMC can get through all of this stuff, it just takes a little bit longer. I think I'm going to pull this log carrier trailer up the road with us, since we're going by here. We can take it to the factory, there's a trailer store there, we'll see if we can turn it in. Just continuing up the highway. The factory is just up ahead to the left. I'm going to pull in here real quick and we'll see if we can sell it and also we'll pick up a fuel 
trailer here and park it out by the road. We'll get turned around and see if we can hook up to this trailer and sell it. Please install appropriate saddle to attach this trailer log carrier front so it will not allow us to pick it up. Well, we can pull it off to the side so it's out of the way. Park that there, pick up a fuel trailer, run it out to the road. We'll probably sell this back here after we get done with all the work. Should be far enough back. We'll just drop it, grab some fuel quick, and then we'll head back over and pick up that sideboard trailer. Then the next stop will be the pipeline facility. We'll get back to the contract. Let's get out of here. So we'll take a left here and an immediate right. Right out onto this back road. This is the way we should have... No, 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 no. Oh my goodness. I tipped over. <laughs> Well, let's jump into the P-16. We're gonna run up the road here, this way, and grab, there's a sideboard trailer back here that has metal beams loaded onto it. We'll run up and grab that real quick. Like I said a long time ago, the flips are bound to happen, especially when you have trucks that are tall and the wheelbase is not wide, like the GMC. It does not have a wide wheelbase at all. So it gets a little unstable when you add the ray suspension. That oversized cargo is heavy, top heavy for sure. And then when you put the mini crane on, that adds more top weight. We'll take this right turn here. Pull right up into this road. It's only up a little ways, just a little bit further. Bouncing around pretty good through here. This is where we got the ray suspension for the twin steer. Right back there by that broken down car. It seems logical. Somehow we stole parts out of a car, put them in our Western Star Twin Steer to get raised suspension. Makes perfect sense, right? That's okay. It's easy to nitpick this game, but we all love it. I'm gonna back right in here and hook up to this trailer. Now, I've said it before and I'll say it again, these trailers are unstable. And this road going out of here is really uneven. So you do have to be very careful or else you're gonna end up dropping this load and then this whole point of this trip was would be for nothing you have to drive back over here with a mini crane to load it back up and at that point it doesn't even make sense so we're gonna try to avoid catastrophe by taking it easy don't need to go too fast we're basically just going right back out the way we came back to the road by the sawmill where this was parked and then we'll take a right once we get there we can drive right up to the back side of the pipeline facility these corners are sharp well, it's a good thing I put some fuel in this from the the big cat on the last episode so we'd have enough fuel to get up there and then we'll have to use this truck to sell that log carrier rear trailer i think we can try going up the riverbed with this it's gonna be probably kind of difficult because of the rocks and the the rocks are icy and uneven but we'll give it a shot I'm just gonna drop it in high and see how it goes not too bad it seems to be doing just fine the truck does have a lot of power. It's like I've said before, this truck itself is really heavy. If you have enough power to get the truck itself moving, then you can pretty much pull anything behind it that you want. But I've noticed with the regular stock special gearbox and the top engine, it's a little bit lower geared. It seems like it has a little more power than it does when I run it with the advanced special being higher geared. So I'm not gonna complain, I'm just gonna Keep it like this for now. It seems to be working just fine. I am definitely not gonna try to attempt to go around to the left with what we have loaded here. So I'm gonna take the right road that goes under the pipeline up by this watchtower ahead, drop it in high, let it do its thing. Working real well. Just up ahead is our drop off. There's our signs, lumber mill to the right and tunnel to the left. We're just gonna go straight, right to this point. Now that we've got that turned in, we need two, one wooden plank and one medium pipes. We can get back in the Fleet Star, wherever that is. There we go. Might as well load up on wooden planks here. Now, let's see. I'm going to turn, I'm going to remove one of these. I don't need both of them. Now from here, we can take the same path we took, only this time we will turn left into the riverbed instead of following it up and around like we did with the P16, and that way we can use this truck to flip the GMC back up when we go through there. I was thinking of loading up extra wooden planks because there's a Valley Polar Base Research contract that requires two, 
And so my initial thought was to load three wooden planks up and get, you know, just double stack. And then we'd have the two extra. But after I started thinking about it, I realized that there is the logging station is right up by that contract drop off. We can just get the two wooden planks there instead. That way we don't have to drive up this uneven riverbed double stacked with the crane up in the air. It's a lot safer this way. And this is where we'll turn off. We're gonna turn up here and take this road and just go right across the top. Right here and down the other side. No, I can't believe this. I'm having a flip-tastic time here today. Let's move back to the garage and bring out the twin steer. I've added the raised suspension and also the 63 inch chain tires. These are the singles. That does make this truck more unstable, but there is an option to do double tires in the back, which will make it a lot more stable. They are shorter though. They're the 55 inch tires. I'm gonna do the 63s and just take it easy. So we'll do the supply crates contract, which is four consumables to the sawmill. We can pick those up at the aerodrome. We'll head over there right now and get loaded. So leaving the garage, we don't have all wheel drive. That is also the reason why I got the bigger tires. So we'd have a little more clearance. We're basically going with height and power in this situation. This truck has a lot of power after I put the top engine in it. For a lot of these spots, you're just gonna have to put it in low and lock in the diff lock. We'll use this truck to try to get some of our other vehicles back up right. So we have two trucks flipped over on the map now. Let's load up four consumables. We have four slots on this truck, so that fits perfectly. And then we'll get turned around. Turning this thing around is like trying to turn around a school bus. We can drive right back out the same way we came in here. Might as well go back into the garage parking lot. Probably just as easy as taking the road around. This thing does get hung up high centered because of how long it is when you're going over sharp hills like that. So you do got to be careful that you don't dig, dig a hole because that'll just make the problem worse. Now that we're in the garage parking lot, we can just take a right out of the parking lot. We'll take the highway all the way up to the factory. First thing we'll do is flip over the GMC. Get it back up on its wheels. Rounding this corner up ahead here. Got to be careful that you don't get these um, arrow signs stuck in the front of your truck. They do get sticky when you take that corner too wide, but we're okay. Just got to slow down a little bit. This truck cruises, especially when you don't have all-wheel drive installed. It really gets moving. Yeah, buddy. Look at it go. <laughs> That's a pretty decent horn on it, too. I'm going to leave that trailer with the service spare parts sitting there. I'm not going to bring that with. Oh, I think I got a sign. I do. There's a sign stuck in my bumper. And these other, <laughs> these other ones are waving around like... <laughs> I'm going to go to the garage for a moment just so I can let that sign disappear. That thing will probably destroy my truck if I keep going. And then let's head back and check. It's gone. Okay, let's get going again. Crisis averted. Ouch, hit that guardrail pretty hard. Even after I hit the brakes, I still slid into it. Coming up on the factory now. Probably just grab some fuel since we're going by here. It's always good to be topped off. And now I can use this truck to flip, flip the GMC back up. I'm gonna just drive straight up here on the hill and then I'll winch from the side of the twin steer to the side of the GMC. Just pulling gently to make sure it doesn't flip me over in the process. Twin steer is pretty heavy so it should be okay. And then I'll jump into the GMC and get this stuff loaded back up. I'm gonna back up a little bit here just to get a better angle and I'll get the consumable first. So I make sure that I have enough room to load it. We'll get that packed so it's out of the way. Go back down and pick up the oversized container. This thing's a little tricky to load. You're gonna have to get it in place and then push it back on the trailer. Just like that. And now we can pack it. We'll hit up the road and get this turned in. Taking it easy now because I don't want to flip again. I'm not really planning to use the twin steer to drive back into the um, sawmill with those four consumables. But now that we have it up here, we can just load it onto a different truck to take in there. Careful going over this bridge. It's easy to fall off the side. Done that before. Now that we're here, you can see the P16s on the other side there. Get these turned in. 
The only thing we have left is one medium pipe and one wooden plank. The wooden plank is in the Fleet Star, just down the, just around the bend. Try to get turned around here, and then we'll go back out the way we came. We could probably try to use this truck to go get the Fleet Star flipped up. It's just over there, playing <laughs> upside down on the hillside there. <laughs> but I don't know. I'm tempted to take this over there. I think we'll leave it. We'll get it back up on the road where we know there won't be any catastrophe. We have more trucks. I'm gonna pull this right over here to the factory parking lot so it's out of the way and I'll park it over here for now. Right along the side of this building. That looks like a good spot. We'll jump back in the big cat and use this to flip the Fleet Star up. This is definitely gonna be a better choice than the GMZ and it's just up the road from where we're at. So we'll head out of here and take a left and we'll get up to the riverbed. The Big Cat is a good recovery vehicle. It's very stable, very powerful, very capable. You can go pretty much anywhere you want it to. We're done with the logging, so there's really no need for it to be sitting there for anything. This time I'm gonna go up through the mud instead of the riverbed. We have gigantic mud tires on it, so that shouldn't be a problem. You just power right through here. This is nothing with this thing. Cruises through here and high like nothing. Now that we're at the riverbed, Fleet Star is just up over the hill, so I'll cruise up the hillside here and put a winch on it. Hey there, buddy. Heard you need some help. I'm gonna hook up to the back of it, kind of get it flipped over. There it is. No problem. Pull this up ahead here just a little bit. Now I can jump into the Fleet Star, get that wooden plank reloaded. Perfect. Let's screws up the road and drop off this wooden plank where we need to. It's just up ahead. This thing is kicking water all over the place. We can turn up to the right here, go up the side of the ditch. There we go. And the drop off is just up ahead. Now that we have that turned in, let's get turned around and we'll head back out to the road. Only thing left is medium pipes. We need to go down to the mountain warehouse, which is way around the mountainside, down by where we picked up that Scout 800 at the very beginning of the exploration episode. It's a long drive down there, but it needs to be done. We'll pull into the factory for now. We're going to jump to the Valley Polar Base research contract. We'll need to load up one metal beam here at the factory, and we'll have to run down the road and grab the trailer that we left behind that has the two service spare parts. So we'll leave the factory, take a right on the highway, and head back until we get to the bridge. Just got to take it easy on this road. The trailer is just up ahead there. We'll get it turned around, and then we'll connect up the trailer and get the cargo repacked. From here, we'll head up the muddy road, take a right on the highway, and just follow the highway up all the way up to the polar base, just like that. So that's our path, let's get going. Probably gonna need to leave it locked in right here. I guess if I stay up to the right, it's not so bad. We tore it up really bad with the GMC a little bit ago, in the middle, staying on the shoulder, it's pretty firm. And then now we can turn, turn right here onto the highway, and then it's just cruising up the road. It's highway all the way to the polar base. Go we'll past the oil field and the logging station, around the corner, and then up the hill. There's a few back roads that take you over, like that road there takes you over to the factory, but it's pretty muddy, and I know we can get through there. It's just gonna be a little bit slower since we have chain tires, I'm gonna just take the highway. Turn off is just up ahead here. Pull in here, and there's a Scout fuel trailer here, to the right, you can see it there. We haven't been up here yet, so it did discover it. This is a good place to get refueled when you're coming in and out of here with this load. Like I said, there are scout fuel trailers everywhere on this map. This is also a good place to repair your truck if you need it. This service trailer here to my left is part of a contest. You have to pull it up into the mountain, but you can still use the repair points from it. it doesn't like, there's no penalty for using them. Now from here we can head back out to the road and we'll switch back over to the Valley Pipeline building contract where we need medium pipes. And I'll show you the path we're gonna take to get there. We're gonna go back out to the highway. And then once we get here, we're gonna turn up and go right up over the top of the mountain and back down the other side. And then to that warehouse back here. That's gonna save us a lot of time. We could take the highway all the way back down to the logging station, but this isn't bad at all. And it, like I said, it does save a lot of time. So we'll go up over the top, turn in right here. I'm gonna follow this road. You do gotta be careful not to tip over on this road because it's uneven. 
So just going low and then right up over the top. This is kind of the peak of it. Then when you come back down the other side of the peak, the road kind of tries to push you to the left there, but you can just cut across the snow here and go down to the right. The reason I jumped back to this contract instead of continuing with the polar base research contract is because I want to get the pipeline cleared out of the way so that we can get the P16 back across there in case we need it for like a support truck. But also I want to open that up so that we can get the consumables delivered back over there to the sawmill without having to take the riverbed. And there's a few other things here that we need to pick up at the same time. So first we'll load up the medium pipes and then let's check our contract list. We need one cement here from this location for that. So we'll grab that cement also. And we need a small pipes from here to take back to the town for the town supplies contract. So let's get small pipes loaded up. You know what? I'm going to swap these around. I'm going to put the small pipes in the truck and the medium pipes in the trailer. And then we'll grab a cement and put on top of the small pipes since they're a little lower. So let's pick that up and we'll load it right up on the top. There we go. I'm just going to put the crane right over the top of them. Now, this warehouse, the only real difficulty here is getting turned around. But I think we can back the sideboard trailer up like this, just like that. And then I'll throw a winch on that pole to try and pull the front of my truck back around on the power line pole. If from here we'll take the highway, we're not going over the mountaintop this time. We're going to take the highway all the way around until we get there. And then we'll just continue down the highway all the way around, cross and back up the other side. When we get to this location, I think I'm going to drop this trailer and then we'll continue up the highway here and get the medium pipes delivered at the pipeline. All right, let's go. I'm top heavy now. This, this road can get a little bouncy with these rocks. So you do got to be mindful of that. Probably just take it a little slower going around the, all of these corners. I'm going to go through here in low. Better safe than sorry, right? Now I'm nearing the corner, coming up on the logging station here in a moment. This is where the road comes out when we were at the top of the mountain, and I was saying that it tries to push you to the left, that's where it comes out, right there. I'm going to stop here and unload the cement, because the cement will go to the polar base research, which is up the road to the left. Now I can just continue around the corner, we'll turn left here back onto the muddy road. I'm going to take the right side this time. It's starting to get pretty tore up in there. It's a lot of jumping back and forth between contracts. Like all the other maps that we've done here in Alaska, you want to take advantage of where you're at, what cargo is available to you. Can you get extra cargo, even double stacking sometimes, just to bring things out to where we can use them in different places. Let's unload the small pipes here. The GMC can take them for the town storage con or the town supplies contract. Then we'll take the medium pipes and we'll put them into the bed of our truck and then we can probably just sell this trailer because i hate it get rid of it now we're on the last piece of cargo for the Vi valley pipeline building all we have to do is drive up the road and drop this off just going to follow this back road here right down the bottom across the wooden bridge this section here you do got to be careful it's kind of a side hill it wants to push you across the river instead of across the bridge and i almost always lose control there and flip off the side of this thing we can bring the P-16 across. The valley pipeline is operational. I'll get turned around. We'll grab the P-16 and bring it through here. I'm going to disconnect this trailer right here. And we'll use the Fleet Star to pull it. But first thing, let's get the P-16 out of here. Run it up the road and get it. We can get that log carrier trailer sold off right away. The P-16 is a great truck, but man, it does not do well on the icy roads at all. Let's get this thing sold. And we'll just park it off the side. We're probably not going to use it here anymore, but it's always good to leave trucks out just in case you need them for recovery or something later on. And we'll get back into the Fleet Star, grab this trailer, get connected to that, and we'll take this back up the road. Somehow I ended up with one of these trailers again, even though I hate them. But we have four slots of cargo space, and we have four slots of cargo right up here that we can load up. So we'll get turned around and then I'll load those up into this truck and trailer. I'm going to probably load the trailer from the side rather than from behind. I think that'll work. And then we'll load it up. There it is. Pack that cargo. We'll pull up, hook up to the trailer and get that cargo packed as well. Okay, everything's packed. 
I'm actually going to unpack it again now that I have it in the trailer so that it reduces the amount of weight because this thing's already unstable, both the truck and the trailer. And I can only imagine that it's going to get worse if we leave it everything packed. So I'm going to drive it over there like this. I'm just going to take it easy. That road going to the right is pretty muddy. I'm going to avoid that. Now that we have the pipeline up and out of the way, we can take this road that goes underneath it. Should be a lot better. The contract is called Supply Crates. And we're going to just follow this road right around. We'll take the riverbed down instead of the muddy section and then we'll get back up on the road and go straight over to the sawmill just like that there were six contracts that we started with not sure let's see i think we've done well we've done a couple perhaps but we should be able to wrap them up pretty quickly i will take the riverbed definitely don't want to take the muddy road up to the right there we're doing okay though especially leaving everything unpacked it's helping quite a bit it's cruising down the riverbed whoa Kind of kicked a little there. Whoa! <laughs> Consumables flying up in the air. That was kind of funny. Just need to reload that one. There we go. Now we'll take this corner. Going slow. Got to take it easy on this corner. Last thing I want to do is get is flip over right before we get there. Up the road to the right is the sawmill. Right over there. I'm going to stay to the left. And we'll drop them off right here in the loading bay. Got to repack. And then... Turn those in. Supply crates is complete. We'll pick up two more wooden planks that we'll need to use on the town supplies contract. So we'll haul these back out the same way we came in. And we can meet up with the GMC and drop them off there. So we're just cruising back down to the riverbed again. Gotta be careful though. The biggest issue with this is the front bumper hits the ground and it just bounces the truck straight up and likely onto its side. But I don't have anything in that trailer behind us, so that definitely helps. We're gonna sell this trailer. And we'll go right back up underneath the pipeline here and just follow the road around. Starting to get a little tore up right there. This is the pipeline we just repaired. Watchtower is up there to the right. We'll go through here and across the wooden bridge. Right on the other side will be the factory. Now we can transfer this cargo over to the GMC. Let's get this trailer sold off first so it's out of the way. Really don't like it. I'm going to put the wooden planks on first, get that one packed. I'm going to leave the last slot in the front to double stack the concrete blocks. And then I'll back up just a little bit here and load the small pipes up in the back of the trailer. As far back as I can. However it wants to sort these out is how it will, I guess. I'm going to unpack. It pushed the wooden planks all the way to the front. We'll just leave that there for now. Let's go grab one concrete block so it can't push it up to the front again. We can load the other one on, but before we do that, I'll unpack and repack. That's what I wanted. Now I got space in the front for the last concrete block. Just like that. Now we can head, up, head back to the town, which is back by the garage. It's actually by the airdrome. We have everything we need for this one contract in one load. Crossing the bridge. We'll be going by the gas station shortly. It's not a far trip at all. We can put it in auto and get some speed going here now. I had planned on bringing the Royal back and using that in this map, but it just kind of didn't happen. Sometimes plans change. Town drop-off is right here, so we'll turn these in and turn that one in as well. And from here, we have two contracts left. There's the drilling spare parts that go from the oil rig service site up to the factory. And we still have the Valley Polar Base research contract. We'll need two wooden planks, one cement, and two fuel. There's one cement we left up there, there's fuel at the drilling site, and there's wooden planks right next to it at the logging station. So everything is right there. Might as well head that way now. I guess we can just take the GMC up there. There's no reason why we can't. It has a crane and we need a crane to load that cement up. So we're gonna take the highway that goes by the service site this time. So once we get out here, we'll turn left and go right past the garage. It's highway the entire way now from here. As long as we don't go too fast and flip over, we should be just fine with this truck. There's the service site to the right. I don't need to go in there for anything. And the long bridge is just up ahead. We'll cruise through here. I like this bridge. We'll go around the corner, and then instead of going straight across the muddy road, we'll turn left, keep following the pavement. There it is. We can stop at the drill site here. This is the site that has both oil and fuel, so you always have to make sure you're loading the right ones. It kind of defaults to the fuel, but still have to pay attention to it because they look 
pretty much the same. Now we can head over to the logging station. We'll pick up the cement that we left on the ground and two wooden planks, and then we'll head up the road to the Valley Polar Base. So leaving the oil field, we got to take a right. Back onto the pavement. Logging station is just up around the corner to the left, not far. We'll swing in here, grab a couple of wooden planks, try not to get stuck. I'll stay to the left. It's a little less mucky on the left side. We'll go right back out the same way we came in. As long as we can get up this little hill and get out of here, which we can, we're good. And our cement is laying on the ground right here. So we can get that loaded. The polar base is just up the road to the right. We'll cruise up there now. And this will be the end of that contract as well. Then we'll just have one contract left to haul the four drilling spare parts, I believe they are. And it's a pretty short trip. We'll turn right around the corner, follow it into the, the polar base. We can grab some fuel while we're here on our way out. Okay, we got promoted to rank 28 and then we'll leave here same way we came. I'll get that last contract activated from water to land. This one's simple enough. We got to drive right back the way we came down the highway again. We'll go past the log station and around the corner and back to the oil rig service site. So that's what it looks like. Let's get going. Grab some fuel real quick before I leave. Should be a straight shot. Quick cruise up the road, get loaded, and then we'll get this dropped off. We'll go right past the log station here. Back to the oil field. Just up ahead is where we're getting loaded. To the right. I'll pull in here and I'll get turned around first before we load. We can just make a straight shot out afterwards. We'll get four drilling spare parts. And then from here, we're just headed to the factory. So we just have to take a left out of here. Go down and across that muddy road. Back to the main highway by the bridge. And then go up the road and we'll be there. It's a pretty short trip. We did a lot of the work on this map with the GMC, surprisingly. I wasn't really planning that. I was thinking that I was gonna use the Royal for most of this, but a lot of it is highway and the GMC already had chain tires for that. And anything that we needed to go on the back roads that were worse, we used the other trucks like the Fleet Star. Mostly it's just the sawmill area back there. It's pretty much, that's the only spot that's like the worst area. I'm just gonna take it easy up the road. Last thing I need is to flip right at the end. We'll just swing in here and get this stuff dropped off. From water to the land is complete. And with that, we've completed all of the contracts here. On the next episode, we'll get started moving some of those heavy trailers. Make sure you come back and check that out. I think that's going to be a good one. We'll use the Dairy Longhorn for that. Until then, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.